Okay, today is November 30, 2021, and we are going to do lab experiment number nine, the last lab of the semester. Report for lab number eight is due right now. Please down upload it to your group folder. You're also going to need to download the spreadsheet for today's experiment, okay? Today's experiment. So the spreadsheet is this one here that you may already have in your in your hard drive, in your computer. Okay, you have to rename it. If it's a Tuesday session, you can rename it P37TU for Tuesday, lab 09, and your group number. My group number is zero, so I'm gonna put uh, group number zero. You double click on this Excel file, and we go to lab number nine right in here. Okay, so, that's the one you want should look like that now let's see what's today's experiment today's experiment this moment of inertia number two experiment and in this experiment we are going to get two masses just like we did before in the first experiment we're going to get two masses rotating from the same distance of the axis of rotation, but the masses are going to be constant. What you're going to change is going to be the radius, the radius that you're going to change. Okay? So, here is your setup, the centripetal force setup. That, that's the first time that we are using, that we are using this setup, right? Two we we'll use it twice for the centripetal force experiment, and now we are using for the second time for the moment of inertia experiment. The rotating shaft. Okay, you are going to measure the diameter of the rotating shaft with the micrometer. So that's what brings us to this, to this table right here. Here you go, that's the diameter that you're going to log right here in meters, don't forget, the micrometer. And I'm going to keep track of the equipment that we're going to use. Here you go, equipment. One is the centripetal force apparatus, just like we had before, right? Maybe I should just copy what I had before, right? But, but uh, that's okay, we, we keep this way. Here you go. And you mention the micrometer. We're going to need the micrometer as well. Diameter. Let's see. Here you go. Rotating shaft. Micrometer measure the diameter of the rotating shaft. Why do we need the, the diameter of the rotating shaft? We need the diameter of the rotating shaft because we need to calculate the torque that the string is going to apply to the shaft, okay? Remember that? You're going to wrap a string right in here, pass through this pulley, and you're going to hang a mass. This mass here is going to apply a force equal to the weight of the mass, and the weight of the mass times the radius of the rotating shaft is going to be the torque that we apply to the shaft. In the next step, we are going to insert a threaded hot rod. Remember that? You did that before, right? Again, just a reminder, this is the same experiment as before. The difference is that we are going to change the radius of rotation of the masses that are going to put there. So here we go. Threaded rod. You have to center the threaded rod and lock it with the locking bolt. I'm going to put it there. Here you go. Locking bolt. Now, 
Next, we're going to get the wing nuts. There are a total of four wing nuts. Let's put here four wing nuts. Make sure the faces of the, the wing nuts are oriented in this fashion. And they're going to get a slotted mass. You're going to need two identical slotted masses. I suggest that you, you, you can choose whatever is a slotted mass you want, provided that they have the same mass. We have a bunch of slotted masses there, you know, and I will assign the proper slotted masses for you. Okay, folks. So you go ahead and put that in the scale. So here you go, two slotted masses and a scale, the scale that we are using has a resolution of 100 of a gram, right? Which is one, two, one, two, three in kilograms, five decimal places in kilograms. And let's go back here to the micrometer, the micrometer here. Go to a hundred of a millimeter, which we are going to have five decimal places in meters. Two is lotted masses of same value. You're going to get this slotted mass. You're going to measure the thickness of this slotted mass that we call W. You don't have to log that in the spreadsheet. Just put that in your, in your data sheet. Why is that? Because, you know, when you position, again, when you position this slotted mass in the threaded rod, you must make sure that the distance, the radial distance, of this slotted mass is five times the thickness of the slotted mass. The thickness of the slotted mass must be very small compared to the radial distance from the center of rotation. So why is that? Because you want this slotted mass to behave as a point mass. And five times the distance is a good is a good distance. Five times the the width of this slotted mass is a good distance. In principle, the largest the distance, the better with respect to this width of the slotted mass. But we do not have an infinitely long threaded rod, right? So we stick with five times the width. Okay, so we clamp the mass with the wing nuts on one side adjust the distance of the center of this slotted mass as far as you can from the center of the shaft we're going to start with the largest possible distance okay that's going to be our first distance r1 i call it r1 you're going to measure that with a ruler. So here you go, one more ruler. And the ruler has a resolution of one millimeter, which is gonna give you three decimal places in terms of meter. The R1, the first distance, is going to be log right in here. And by the way, the mass of this slotted mass goes here. So, so far we have those three values. One, two, three. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, sorry. Uh, remember here, capital M is the value of single rotating mass, right? So this rotating mass is this one here. 
You want the rotating mass the log is right in here, the radius right in here, and the diameter of the shaft right in here. We still didn't measure the mass of the hanging mass. Let's call this one R1. Okay, so here you go. You got to do the same for the other mass on the other end of the threaded rod. Capital M again is the mass of the rotating mass, the slotted mass. You're going to need, just like before, you're going to need a one meter and a half long string. And that's what we are going to log right here. 1.5 meter long string. That's the string that's going to apply a torque to the rotating shaft in order to measure this string we must have a meter stick one meter stick one meter stick measuring the one meter and a half long string with a ruler is not convenient right folks so we gotta use a meter stick which by the way has the same resolution as the ruler. What's next? Wrap the string around the shaft, just one layer of the string because I don't want the torque to change. Approximately 0.8 meters, approximately, okay? The best way to judge is to is to attach your hanging mass to the end of the string. Make the hanging mass touch there the floor. And then little by little wrap the string around the shaft. That's the best way. Pass the remaining of the strings through the pulley. Here you go. Do not accumulate more than one layer of the string on the shaft. Using the scale, measure the exact mass of the provided hanging mass. All this value is the right number of sequence figures, okay? Hanging mass. So here you go. Hanging mass. And I will provide the hanging mass for you. Uh, don't forget it's M. M is going to be measured in terms of grams, right? going to be you know, either 100 grams or 200 grams, depend what uh, I give to your group. 2, 3, 4, 5 in kilograms. Use the, the actual unit for mass. And now you log it, this value here. Lowercase mass is the hanging mass, uppercase m is the rotating mass. Here you go, wrap the hanging mass, hang the hanging mass at the end of the string. And you know, that is the first thing you're supposed to do, right? I'm going to change the procedure for the ne another next year. But for now, you can, that you know, uh, you you attach, you first attach the hanging mass to the string, to the end of the string. Hey, this string should be around 1.5 meters. And then you place the mass there, touching the floor, and just wrap one or two turns in there. In the shaft. What to do next? Make sure that the angle that the string makes with the horizontal is, is not is not too steep. Okay, and then you wind it. Okay, we can have we can measure that with a protractor, for instance. 
so you have an idea of the angle. It should be less than 10 degrees, so you don't have too much of a variation in the torque. Okay, so let's add that uh, the protractor to our list. Protractor. Okay, you don't need to make any measurements that are going to go in the spreadsheet, but uh, just uh, next. You go, can be put the protractor there. At the shaft, I can put the protractor here next to the to the pulley, okay? So rewind the string around the shaft until you can get to the highest possible height. The higher, the better, okay? The higher, the better. This height H, you measure with the meter stick. And you log right in here of course don't forget to log the value of the g2 right the acceleration of gravity and we go before releasing the math make sure the string wound around the shaft forms a single layer okay hold the shaft with the hanging math at height h when you are ready, release the shaft and start your timer. So you're going to have a timer as well. Timer. And your timer has a resolution. Okay, maybe here you go. Of a hundred of a second. Time, how long it takes for a mass to reach the floor. The same person that releases the mask should be holding the timer as well. Once the mask, the hanging mask reaches the floor, you stop the timer. And now you're going to have your first time measurement right in here. You repeat that three times. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay. So here you go. Repeat this procedure twice for a total of three measurements. And then what you're gonna do now? There is a slight difference between this procedure and the other, okay? In this procedure, every time that you make a measurement with a rotating mass at a given distance, you do it again at the same distance without the slotted mass, right? Just, you know, remove the slotted mass, don't move the, the wing nuts. That would correspond to mass equal to zero. Okay, that would correspond to mass equal to zero. And you repeat the experiment. For this time right in here, you're gonna do only once. Ideally, we should, do, we should be doing as many times as we can, just like we did three times here, okay? But uh, we are doing only once because we do not have enough time during the lab to do that. That's, that's why we are doing only once. Do you remember how we did before? Before we calculate that, we timed that only at the very end, right? So T1, T2, T3, and T0, they are all have a resolution of a hundred of a second. So what's next? Now, place the choose what method the distance, five, W. That's gonna be the shortest distance that you're gonna use. Okay. I call that R2. I call that R2. You measure the thickness of the mass, Multiply that thickness by 5, and that's what's going to be your next measurement, your next positioning of the slotted mass. Here you go. Right in here would be our R2. The mass is not going to change, right? And just don't forget single rotating mass. Just choose either, you know, either one to log the value right in here. 
And then what you do? Repeat the experiment, right? Repeat the experiment at this position. When you repeat the experiment at this position, you're going to get T1, T2, T3 with the mass. Remove the slotted mass and repeat the experiment just with the wing nuts. Okay, and that's what you get here. And now you know what to do next, right? Next, you're going to choose four more distances. You already have two measurements at two different radii. You're going to measure, you're going to choose four more distances. And I want those different, uh, these, these four additional distances to be equidistant from each other between R1 and R2, okay? That would be R3. You're going to have R4, R5, and R6. Right in here. R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6. The spreadsheet is already programmed to calculate the average time. Don't forget to use the sequence figures, right? The average time involves sum. Is already programmed to calculate the I and the I naught and plus the I M R. They are square too. You don't have to worry about sequence figures here for those quantities in red. When you are done, you are going to plot IMR in the y-axis and R is square in the x-axis. So when you do that, what you're supposed to get? You're supposed to get uh, a slope equal to, to M, right? Two capital M. Here you go. Theoretical value is two capital M. Depending on the mass, rotating mass that I gave you, you are going to have one value here. Plot, get the slope, log it here. Don't forget to write down all the units. Units here, units here, and units here, right? And that's basically the experiment. If you want to go, you know, don't forget that I have all the derivation here of the equations, how you get I, I did that before, right? Using conservation of energy. If you want to review this theory, go ahead, do that. And that's how I calculate IMR. IMR, I, me uh, I, I measure, right, with those three time measurements. I not, I measure, I also measure, I obtain it from the time. I, do, I don't measure I, I don't measure I not. I measure T, T1, T2, T3 here, and I measure T not here, and calculate those two values from the measurement of T. The measurement of the point masses is going to be I minus I not. Okay, so basically that's the experiment, and I hope you have a successful result there. So see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.